The Faith Chapel United Pentecostal Church, located at One Renfield Avenue in Kingston, Jamaica, welcomes you to our broadcast, Behold, He Cometh. It is indeed our pleasure to have you watching and listening in on our service today. As end-time prophecies unfold themselves, revealing the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no better opportune time to give your life to Jesus than today. As you listen in, may the Lord richly bless you in all wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in his word. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just continue to worship the Lord? Hallelujah. You're truly awesome, God. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for saving our souls, God. Thank you for fighting our battles, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's continue to worship the Lord as we minister in song. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. And can we just stand everyone everywhere and just lift our hands right now? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy of praise, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 And in this atmosphere of worship, we have sung and we have worshiped. And we are still worshiping. Comes time to hear what God has to say to us today. We want to invite to come and speak to us this time. Minister Leonard Smith and the Holy Ghost. God bless him as he
Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. Hallelujah. 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 He breaks every fetter and every chain and he gives the victory again and again and again and again. Hallelujah. Can we worship him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 There is power in that name. I said there is power in that name. There is power to save. Power to keep. Power to satisfy. Glorify your name, Jesus. There is healing in that name. There is deliverance in thy name. There is salvation in thy name. At that name, even the very demons in hell tremble and quake. For that name is powerful. Glorify your name, Jesus. All power was given unto him in heaven and in earth. Glorify your name, Jesus. And guess what? He transferred some of that power to you and to me this afternoon. So that whatsoever things we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things we shall lose here today shall be loosed in heaven. Is there a worshiper in this house? Is there a victor in this house? Worship him. Worship him. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I like to feel a certain liberty in the house. I like to feel a certain looseness. I like to feel when people are free to let go and let God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't like to feel like I'm pressed down. And being bogged down. I don't like to feel like I have the burden of the world upon my shoulders. One man did that already. And we don't need another savior. Is there still a worshiper in the house? Does somebody feel free to lift their hands? Does somebody feel free to say amen? Does somebody free, feel free to shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Does somebody feel free? Ah, go shut up a house to go into the enemy's camp, taking back what he stole. Echo shut up a house. Glorify your name, Jesus. Every day is a new day to win a battle. Every day is a new day to win a victory. Yesterday's victory is gone. Today I want a new thing. Sing us, let him do a new work. Don't sing it, 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 don't sing it. Let's go. Don't sing it. Let's just worship him. Let's just worship him. Don't help them sing us. Let's just worship him. Let's just worship him. Let's just worship him. Let's just feel free in the house of God. Let's just feel free to laugh. Let's just feel free to rejoice. Hallelujah. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name. Don't help us yet, singers. Don't help us yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just, let's just do our thing. Let's just worship God in our own way. Let's just exercise our own Holy Ghost. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glorify your name, Jesus. We're waging today's battle. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. But God has never lost a battle. 
God has never lost a battle. You can't find one fight that he has lost. Glorify your name, Jesus. And he won't lose this one today. He won't start on you. He won't start on me to lose battles. Whatever your battle is this afternoon, you're in the right place. I said you're in the right place and the right time for a blessing. It's the right time for a healing. It's the right time for deliverance. It's the right time for my victory. You have your Bibles with you. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. And I'm just going to be reading a few verses in your hearing from Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 10. Glorify your name, Jesus. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things. So that law can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers there unto, and I want us to note the word perfect. Verse 2, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. So if the law was effective, praise God, when you did it once, you should not have been left with a problem of conscience the next year. So that you have to then do it again the following year. If it was effective. So it really wasn't taking away the sins. It was just kind of pushing them back. Pushing them back. Pushing them back. Praise God. Verse 3. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. As I said. For it is not possible that the blood of goats, uh, of, of bulls and of goats, should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body, but a body, praise God, a human body thou hast prepared. If humans are the sinners and the wage of sin is death to humans, bulls or goats cannot be the sacrifice. So God had to prepare himself a sacrifice. Praise God. And he could not come in spirit. Some people like to justify and say, well, it's Jesus Christ that. And he was God and God is a spirit. So therefore he can be perfect, but I can't be like him. But he did something significant in that he prepared himself a body. Glorify him, your name, Jesus. So that the Bible says, praise God, he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And we continue. Glorify your name, Jesus. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou had no pleasure. Then said I, Jesus, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice an offering and burnt offering, uh, and, and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered by the law. And we know the word law as well. Then again he said, then said I, lo, I come to do thy will. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second. And I'm skipping down to verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my law into their hearts 
and in their minds will I write them. In their minds. Oh, come on, somebody. Glorify your name, Jesus. Not in a rule book. Oh, come on, somebody. And I'm glad that we have the written word just to help some of us. Just in case we kind of try to argue our way out of the thing that we know. Because let God be true and every man a liar. Come on, somebody. That we know because the Holy Ghost is in us. Glorify your name, Jesus. But God said, let, praise God, the truth be established. Among two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So we have another witness, the word of God. Glorify your name, Jesus. Praise God, amen. And I will write my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness, boldness, not because them say, you can't save. Are you this minute? No, you from so and so. Huh? Not because they remembered some fault that you did. Oh, come on, somebody. He that the Son sets free. I'm still reading. I'm still reading. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. Praise God. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance, full confidence of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Praise God. Praise God. Let's bow our heads. Great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the helpless sinner's friend. You have given your word. I pray thee, Lord, your anointing upon him from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. Grant him an open door. Anoint every word, every thought, every act, great God. Grant your people, the hearers of your word, receptive hearts, and let your word accomplish that which you set it out to do. Let us be careful to give you thanks in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Glorify your name, Jesus. There is something very valuable about rules. There is something very essential and necessary about rules. Rules are given by God, glorify your name, Jesus. And they should be honored if they are in the will of God and they are righteous. Praise the Lord Jesus, somebody. Praise God. The law was given and it was given for a purpose. Glorify your name, Jesus. And sometimes it is difficult for us to, to understand why Praise God. In this time, and some folks will say a time of grace, amen, why we need to, amen, be following rules anymore. And the response that I often give is to remember that God has given this heavenly gift in an earthen vessel. Praise the Lord Jesus, somebody. And we remember the conflict that Paul outlined. The thing that I would that I do not, and the thing that I would not, that I find myself doing. So inside of me, there is a spirit that desires to do the right thing, but there is also something inside of me that desires to do something else. And that something else is a desire to satisfy, amen, itself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your flesh does not have a mind of its own. It is just designed a certain way. Praise God. Amen. Glorify your name. And it is desired, amen, to function in a natural world. But because sin came into this world, praise God, our flesh... 
praise God, seem to have gotten some upper hand, amen, over our spirit such that, amen, its power and its desires seem to be stronger than the desire that we have in our human spirit. And so we have this war that rages, amen, glorify your name. And if we are not careful, praise God, we will all go astray. All we like sheep have already gone astray. So rules came into being to let us know, remind us, they were written down in black and white. Praise God, so that if somehow our emotions get the better of us, and our judgment gets kind of clouded. Praise God that we can't see what right and wrong is. Praise God. God let it know, be known in rules and in laws. And even in the natural world we find laws being made in society. So that nobody can uh, claim that well I should just live by my conscience. Because some people have no conscience at all. It would appear. And so governments have to lay down laws and rules. What it does is that, uh, amen, it forces flesh, amen, praise God, to face consequences when the rules are broken. And even in the church, the apostolic church that we are living in today, without rules, Pastor Grizzle, oh my God Almighty, you would be sorry to know how Holy Ghost people can behave. Oh God Almighty. You would be sorry to know how we can behave if we did not have rules that are set. Glorify your name, Jesus. So for the natural life that we live and for the sojourn that we are making through this life, rules are necessary. But there is something about the God that we serve that makes rules insufficient to please him. So you might be able to live in this life with rules and get by fooling some of the people some of the time. But if you're trying to live by the rules alone to please God, you're going to fail. I said you're going to fail. Glorify your name, Jesus. Because God, hallelujah to God, has a nature that is different from our nature. And he has a standard that is different from our standard. And his ways are not our ways. Come on, somebody. And so the rules are important. But when God set those rules back in the day, praise God. Amen. He set them not with the motive that the rule is the end of it. And this is the rule is supposed to accomplish. But he was setting the rule to point to something about his nature. He was setting the rule to point to something that he has placed in us. That he wanted to come out of us. And so we find ourselves in this life confronted by rules. And confronted by the law then. Praise God. And the aim of those folks back then, praise God, was they seemed to define a new thing called perfection. Amen. On the law and on the rule. So that, praise God, hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that they strive to fulfill the law. Amen. Praise God. But the law was in, unable to make the commerce there unto perfect. This thing called perfection. Perfection is an attempt to conform to an ideal. And let's talk about perfection in church. Because there are some folks who still don't have a concept of what the perfection of God is. And they make some ideals in their own minds about what things ought to be like and then they judge others based on those ideals and so they have done away with the law of the old covenant but somehow we're coming to church with some new laws 
And sometimes I try to find if there's another book in the Bible. Some that I miss. Where these rules come from. That I'm being judged by these rules. Come on somebody. And so I feel so unworthy in these person's company. Has anyone been, ever felt like that? In the company of some folks, some saints, some Christian folks, glorify your name, Jesus, who somehow you can never ever seem to measure up to their ideal. Oh, come on, somebody. Perfection in the word of God, hallelujah, amen, did not speak to conformity to an ideal. It spoke, praise God, to completeness and soundness. So that the Bible says, in Jesus Christ, we are complete. We are perfected in him. So that the righteousness that I have is not my righteousness. But it is a righteousness that comes through obedience to God and his word. Come on, somebody. The righteousness that I have is not judged by the rules and the laws of men. But by obedience to the word of God. Don't set no rules where God don't set no rules. If God say you must, must, must eat something, don't come and tell me. That I mustn't eat it. God know why I tell you. Not to eat it. And if you get a revelation from God. So you mustn't go somewhere. Don't take that revelation and pass it on to me. I wonder if I'm still in church. If God say you mustn't do something. Huh? Try and ask God, God, is it for me or is it for me and everybody else? Come on, somebody. Because if you're not careful, you will get people holding you in contempt. You know what contempt is? Let's talk. If you do something and offend me, and I think little of you, my emotion is going to be an emotion of contempt. I don't think you're as righteous as me. I've been in church longer than you. I know this thing. So how dare you tell me that I must stop and wait until the Bible finish read before I come in. An example. How dare you tell me. I know what the, 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 the thing is. So I will hold you in contempt. And I would project an air of pride towards you. Now you see, when we start to talk about these things, the law becomes a little bit difficult. Because you can't rule these things. You can't make these things in rules that, to tell people how to understand and how to behave and have the right attitude. It is spirit in you. It is your heart in you. That lets you know when you are offending somebody in these kinds of ways. It is character that dictates and character is an attribute of spirit. So that pastor can make some general rule to help us along the way. But if you don't have Holy Ghost in you to know, glorify your name. That the Bible says pride and arrogance and the evil way God despises. We get away with murder. We get away with murder. Hatred. Anger. Strife. Comes by things that cannot be legislated. We can get general rules. But outside of having a true relationship with God. Even these rules we get away with. Because some of us are skillful. Huh? In accomplishing offense, in accomplishing conceit, in accomplishing resentment, huh? Without telling you that they hate you, 
Nobody not go come and tell you that they hate you. Nobody not go come and tell you that you are beneath me. But sometimes I tell you, mothers, be careful. If you have your daughter and your uh, in, in in your house and and you tell her something and she roll her eye up in the air and just walk away. You think you can write a rule? Huh? That's contempt. Mother, you don't know where you are, so you're out of date. You're out of touch. Huh? But spirit picks up that something is wrong with this attitude. It's spirit that understands these things. Glorify your name, Jesus. And then the law of righteousness, God's righteousness has to kick in. Is there still a worshiper in the house? I said, is there still a worshiper in the house? So perfection is not your version of righteousness. Some of us have set up some things. And you will understand, praise God, when you formulate your own self-righteousness, you're in trouble with God's law and God's rule. Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. So sometimes we have to be careful about some of the things that we project onto others. Because if somebody comes up to you and they say to you, God bless you, my sister, somebody that you never really even know and talk up to. But they come up to you and they say, God bless you, my sister, how are you? And try to strike up a conversation. And you respond with a cold shoulder. Spirit pick up cold shoulder. You can't write cold shoulder in a law. Huh? But everybody intuitively know. That people do these gestures and they register in the law of God. They don't register down here. Don't go to parliament. Don't go to court with these things. But they register in the law of God as a spirit that is not right. And so sometimes now you may give some reason. I don't like to talk up to people. As an example, not trying to trouble anybody. But as far as you are concerned, at a personal value in your life, a personal principle, but to the unsuspecting person over there, so it registers differently. It registers as contempt. I can't talk to you because huh? you are always behind the podium. I can't. So that's how it projects. Then we have unbelievers now coming and they get the same treatment. Right. How we come and we see them with five ears, earrings going down their ears. And somehow it causes a fear. And it causes a resistance. And so we, out of our own fear we project it onto somebody else. And then we justify it by saying I am righteous and I am holy. We have to be careful. I said, we have to understand spirit. We have to understand heart. Because the essence, praise God, of the law of God is love. The essence of the law of God is love. And so whatever I project to you, when you leave, you must feel that this was an act of love. If you leave feeling condemned, if you leave feeling like a wretched sinner without the option for forgiveness. Because there's a difference. You can leave feeling like a sinner, but the person leave you with hope. But God Almighty, when them leave you, and not tell you what to do. Then they have effectively condemned you. For who Christ died for, you have left condemned. So we need to understand that the law of God is essentially a law of love. Separating it from our own personal values. And sometimes we need to take the time to explain, amen, ourselves to others. To communicate ourselves to others. Because when you do that, the thing that they may have perceived was an offense. When you're finished, they would have said, oh, I see why you are doing this. 
And even though it may be a personal value, based on the fact that God put it there and you explain, then now they leave feeling a sense of love. Can somebody worship him? Can somebody worship him? So, in the concept of perfection and striving to be perfect, we need to be careful to understand that God's ideal for perfection is obedience to his word. No more, no less. You can't come church in a red frock because red is an offense to God. Old time thing, but some people can still relate to it. Come on, somebody. Talking about rules that we have made, self-righteous rules. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with the rule. Because if that thing that people do causes sin to come in the church path, I have to say, listen, don't do this. Why? Because ten people who do, out of every ten people who do it, five of them are going to backslide. So if I if I gonna lose five of them, uh, if 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 I make the, if I don't make the rule, I'm gonna make the rule, and the rest of us just be patient and give up our right for the saint. Am I still in church? So that we understand the place that rules have, and make a distinction between the rules that have to be in place because of sin. Glorify your name, Jesus. Burst in the heart that God is trying to make. Because if all of us find the heart of God, Pastor Grizzle would not have to be making any rules like that. We're still in church. Glorify your name. We can make a rule to tell sister so-and-so to wear her skirt all the way down here. To protect her dignity and her self-worth. So we can make the rule and when she comes to church, she looks all glorious. But when she gets to Chevron's house, where is the rule then? Who is going to go watching over the dress then? What is going to prevent the long skirt from being short then? Can we still worship in church? Glorify your name, Jesus. Next key word, conscience. Glorify your name, Jesus. So in the concept of perfection, there's law. Glorify your name. And there's something else. Conscience. All of us have a conscience. In spite of the fact that some of us appear not to have one. Glorify your name, Jesus. And our conscience, amen, is a natural built in mechanism inside of us that taught us throughout the years that we were growing what was good to do in society and what was bad to do in society taught us a sense of right and wrong even unbelievers have conscience so therefore conscience is not like a spiritual concept like sin sin is transgression of the law and you don't hear people talking about sin in parliament. Then it, on, anytime you hear the word sin mentioned, it's church you're in, right? Come on, somebody. Glorify your name. But people talk about conscience all the time. And so your conscience is based on things that you may have learned. Even in your youth. And so when you become an adult, glorify your name, Jesus. Your conscience can be offended offended by things that are even not scriptural your conscience can be offended by things that are not scriptural because the foundation of conscience is not the word of God the primary foundation of conscience is the things that your mommy and your daddy or your grandma taught you when you were some of it is based on old fashioned godly principles but not all of it and so, in, even in the, con the concept of conscience, we have rules. Glorify your name. Trying to establish and accomplish the right. But we all know that even with those rules and those con uh, that conscience imposes, some of us have our conscience is seared with a hot iron. 
we can override it. We can ignore it. And we can push past even our very conscience saying, no, don't do this. And it cannot accomplish the righteousness of God. Even our conscience. If it were so, when the dispensation of conscience came about, there would not be, have been a need for anything else. Law would not have had to come. And further on grace. So even conscience, even though it has inbuilt rule, and the thing about conscience is that you don't know just right from wrong from a societal point of view or morals from, you know, among people. But there's an emotional resistance. When your conscience strikes, you feel it. It's something, that's, it's something that you feel. You feel offense at this person eating with him hand. Conscience for that wrong. Can't go in a parliament and do that. Conscience can make some rules and you, and you feel it. And sometimes we come into the house of God and our consciences might be offended towards some things. But even so, we can override those, con that, those rules of conscience. And as a matter of fact, when some of us have come into the kingdom of God and we got saved, we literally have to override some of those emotional resistance. Bible says, if our hearts condemn us, God is greater. Huh? So sometimes some of us come into church and something that we never used to do. We felt it was so offensive or so wrong. I don't know what they may be. Washing your feet in public may offend some people. So come to communion service and it's a problem. Whatever it may be, we need to understand and be careful that we don't allow the rules of our conscience to override the will and the law of God. Is there somebody worshiping in the house? Now the challenge with trying to obey rules or to try to be perfect uh, according to some set guideline and even if the guideline is perfect because the law was perfect, we are not. Glorify your name, Jesus. And so what that leads to, it leads to, to, to sin and then sin causes guilt. And there are many folks here this afternoon still living in guilt. Guilt is I hold myself accountable for this thing. And until I hold my continue to, and, 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 and until I forgive, I will always feel guilty. Now there's something about guilt. There are some folks who find themselves in an unfortunate position where they, are, they seem to be trapped in some behavior or habit or attitude that their conscience is offended in or the word of God speaks against. And somehow because they're trapped and feel like they can't escape, then they hold themselves continually guilty. And we come to church in a perpetual state of condemnation. Because if forgiveness don't come, then you remain condemned. And so you come to church in a perpetual state of condemnation. Glorify your name, Jesus. And because you come in church, praise God, feeling that sense of condemnation, you cannot lift your hands to worship God. That's the disadvantage of the rule. The rule has no remedy where you cannot fulfill it. The rule has no solution to give you deliverance so that you can obey it. And the, the honest truth is that some of us have found ourselves into some situation that the Holy Ghost don't deliver us yet. He has not delivered us yet from those things and when we don't the time that it takes between discovering this thing and the deliverance because some of us are living in that sense of self-righteousness 
Pastor don't have this. Sister so and so don't have this. So therefore, I am, I am a sinner. And I am worse than everybody else. And so I can't do nothing else. Some people stop come to church. I can't come to church until this thing is resolved. I am in debt. Uh oh. And because I'm in debt, and name insurance calling me up, I don't know the bank calling me up and CB calling me up. It must be a sin for a saint to be in debt. And so I can't come to church until I pay off my debt. Uh oh. Oh God Almighty. The landlord. Worse if him live next door. You can't pass him. And you feel so contempt. And your head is in the hole. And you can't say you're a Christian. Because you can't pay a rent. Who says so? Where is it written? Is there a second chapter in Revelation? I don't know. Book of Revelation 1 and then 2. I'm just trying to find where it is written. So that if you deny yourself from the source of your deliverance, how are you going to get delivered? If you let your conscience bite you so that you can't pray, then where is the help going to come from? Then if we were able to save ourselves, what need there be for me to be going to church? Love still has the power to even when you are condemned cast yourself on the mercy of God for the mercy of God is everlasting glorify your name and if your heart condemn you as I say God is greater than your heart let the landlord come and take him out I'd rather have Jesus. God, God Almighty. Listen to me. One song I just say, listen man, for all you people who are still walking up and down in guilt. Guilt is not a virtue. <laughs> guilt is not, I don't know. When I, when I saw the fruit of the spirit being listed, I don't remember seeing guilt in it. So if you feel the sensation of guilt, rebuke it in Jesus' name. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Guilt is not a virtue. You don't get any reward for it. Resentment is not a virtue. Stop half of people. You're not going to get grades for it. You're not going to get marks for it. You're not going to get a sticky for it. You're still feeling guilty. What one song where they say, when gloom and sadness whisper, huh? Telling you what? You have sinned. There is no use to pray. How the rest of it go? I look away from my guilt, from my condemnation. And I look to the lifter up of my head. I look to the hills. I look to the strong tower. And what provision has he made? I see a crimson stream of blood for the blood that give me strength from day to day will never lose its power. The blood is not aspirin. Huh? It is not Panadol. It is bigger than Fensic. Come on, somebody, so that you can use it to chase demons and you can use it to solve the landlord problem. It don't have no... What is those symptoms that you, you get? Side effects. It do 
you have no side effects. Come on, somebody. You ever see some of those medications? I want a medication for my little bump on my face. And the side effect is dead. How comes? You can look better, but the side effects are dead. The Holy Ghost have no side effect. Come on, somebody. If there's anything called side effect, it is the effect of demons running out of your life. I could shut your heart. Because when I see the blood, no that angel can come on my house. I could shut your heart. Glorify your name, Jesus. Saints of God, let me try and wrap this thing up. Glorify your name, Jesus. God saw that there was a problem. Glorify your name with the rules and the regulations in trying to use them as a mechanism to please God. You can't use that in today's day. Even Moses, when he was offering up those sacrifices, was doing it as a sign of things to come. And guess what? Today, turn to your neighbor and say, today, today, today that thing has come. I said, today that thing has come. Glorify your name, Jesus. For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. I said if you let go of your forcefulness to try and hold on to the law. If you miss some rule, make sure you hold on to Jesus. Make sure you hold on to the Holy Ghost. For God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I'm here to declare to somebody this afternoon that there is a better way. There are too many people still living in condemnation. I said there are too many people still walking in doubt. There are still too many people limping. You're trying. You're trying to live right. You're trying to walk like a saint. But somehow, the memory of your sins keep coming back. I come to tell you, he whom the sun sets free. I say, he whom the sun set free. He whom the sun set free. For there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. You need to understand the concept of the new covenant. Glorify your name, Jesus. That God has written the law into your heart. That you may know him for yourself self is not conditional upon a rule book it's conditional upon faith in God you came to church today glorify your name Jesus and you're being held back by the rule Menavna skirt for come to church don't have any skirt to wear. My hair cut off. Maybe I should wait until it grow back. Trying to find those rules. Glorify your name, Jesus. I don't know. If you're in sin, my, some days I'm not very bright. And I hope that today is not one of those days. But sometimes I can't figure out that if you are in sin, glorify. Why would you want to transform yourself to a Christian to come and be a Christian. You have to come just as you are. You have to come just as you are. Glorify your name, Jesus. And when you come and you cast your cares upon him who cares for you, come on, your burden will be lifted. It's a lie. It's a lie. The devil is a liar. 
The devil is a liar. I don't care what circumstances you are in. Some of us come into uh, Pentecost and well, my mother was an Anglican and my father was an Anglican. Somehow, there's a rule somewhere that says, well, this just can't work. I like the worship. And if demons troubling me in my bed are calling you, but somehow I, there's a rule somewhere that said I can't come to this church because my generation they are Anglican and my generation are Baptists. Uh, but there is no hallelujah organization in heaven. God hears only one thing a broken spirit and a contrite heart. God will not despise. If you're in sin, you need the blood. If you're an Anglican, you need the blood. If you're a Baptist, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. Is there still a worshiper in the house? Glorify your name, Jesus. Glorify your name, Jesus. I'm here to declare to somebody this afternoon that you can't walk in the power of God. Glorify your name, Jesus, and be living below the law. The law is rudimentary. Glorify your name, Jesus. When you start to walk in the spirit, oh, glorify your name, Jesus. You will automatically glorify your name, Jesus. Have the ability to conform. Glorify your name, Jesus. To any necessary rule that God allows in church. But don't try it the other way around. You're going to fail. Is there still a worshiper in the house? There is no power, praise God, outside of the new covenant way. Glorify your name, Jesus. God has forgiven you unconditionally. And the rule, praise God, hallelujah. If you can't remember any other rule, remember this rule. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. No landlord can condemn you. No banker can condemn you. And I know that terrible feeling of getting that phone call from somebody trying to hound you, telling you that you owe them money. Glorify your name, Jesus. But no banker can condemn you if God set you free. Glorify your name, Jesus. If them calling you asking for something, I'm going to talk to the one who have it. Go and talk to the Father of heaven above and put it in his hands. I said, put it in his hands. Glorify your name, Jesus. Can somebody worship him? Let us have boldness, brethren, to come before God. Don't let hallelujah to God. Don't let the rules of men hinder us. Don't let the rules of men of this world hinder us from acceding to the truth of the word of God. Glorify your name, Jesus. Begin to trust God. Begin to trust God. Begin to cast your cares upon him. If you're here this afternoon and you're not yet repented and you're struggling with something that is holding you back, let me tell you, God has made that way. All you have to do is open up your heart. All you have to do is open up your heart. Glorify your name. Can we stand to our feet this afternoon? And I'm going to invite somebody, whoever you are, whoever you are this afternoon, you're not yet filled with the Holy Ghost, come. But you are, you're just feeling guilty. You're feeling, you're not making it. You're just not worthy. You're not, you're in church, but somehow there seems to be a standard set and you are constantly missing the mark and you feel like you are a second rate saint. You're feeling hindered. You're feeling like the Holy Ghost and the anointing in your life is being hindered because of a feeling of low self or spiritual worth. It's not the plan of God. I said it's not the plan of God. Now are we the sons of God and if you're a son, you're not 
a servant in that sense. You're an heir to the throne of God. And if you feel that like you need to be living in the power of God, the time is now. And God is here. Come. God bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I need not to add anything. You are here without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm just going to invite you to come. You're just visiting. That's fine. But we are inviting you to come. We just want to pray with you before you leave. Do I have an individual right now? Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. along with them. Do I have a meal that would want to come today? There's one coming. Do I have another meal that would want to come? Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to leave the same way you came, you know. There's an outstretched hand that is saying, come. All you that labor and are every laden, come. And I will give you rest. Do I just have one more person that would want us to pray with them today?
Oh